Welcome to part 5 of our tutorial on op amp circuits and in this tutorial uh, I am just you know planning to discuss the circuits of the logarithmic and the anti-logarithmic amplifiers with y'all okay so uh, let's just you know start today's uh, session using uh, the logarithmic amplifier first okay so there you go okay so uh, this uh, logarithmic amplifier what it does basically is that the output of uh, from this you know logarithmic amplifier is just you know obtained as the logarithm of the input voltage signal whichever we would apply into this circuit as the input okay so the logarithmic amplifier like uh, the uh, I mean few of the previous you know circuits that we have you know shown you in case of the um, op amp okay works in the um, closed I mean works uh, using the op amp in its you know, closed loop configuration so if I just you know draw the circuit right over here you'll just shortly discover okay so there it is the output terminal of the op amp okay and here the non-inverting input again is grounded okay so um, on the other hand we would you know apply this um, input over here at terminal A so let's just call the input signal as VI and we have this input resistance connected over here just we name, name it as R and then as the feedback path since the you know op amp you know, op operates in the closed loop uh, configuration so the feedback path that we're going to use over here would consist of a diode instead of any resistance so we would call the diode as D so this is basically the circuit of the logarithmic amplifier as you can see here so if I just you know quickly move in uh, I mean if you just take notice that since the non-inverting input is grounded over here the voltage again you know gets reflected to the inverting input as such okay so here as we can see that uh, this uh, I mean this phenomena as you'll know if you have followed our previous tutorials that this phenomena you know takes place due to the I mean the very very large open loop gain of the op amp device okay so let's just call it as you know terminal G now this should be at approximately the ground voltage okay so now the G is gonna suffer from the condition of virtual ground due to the non-inverting input of the op amp being grounded in this case so we're gonna just use uh, this um, concept of uh, the virtual ground as well okay in order to uh, derive the equation okay the transfer equation of this um, uh, circuit as you can see so uh, let me just mention one thing whenever you have this uh, an external device connected with an op amp then uh, the overall circuit that uh, is gonna be uh, you know um, that that's gonna uh, basically you know, emerge uh, would contain all the properties of this external device and the op amp as well okay it'll, it'll just you know combine the properties in a way that you'd have a you know a net operation okay so like uh, that we're using this uh, diode equation I mean we're gonna use this diode equation over here and you know show you how the op amp you know, actually produces a logarithmic outputs in this case so basically whenever an external device is connected with an op amp the op amp basically you know if what it does is that in this overall circuit I mean circuit it just you know incorporates the uh, properties of the device as well so um, here due to the applied input signal okay there should be a current flowing through the resistance R okay and this current again should flow through the feedback path and finally out into the um, output terminal of the op amp so it is going that way because due to the as you'll have seen in the previous tutorials we know that the op amp has an inf I mean a very large uh, input resistance so no current can enter through the input terminals of the op amp okay so therefore it takes through I mean takes uh, its way through the feedback path over here so um, now if I just you know try and write the equations of the current you know flowing through R okay so the current flowing through R would be you know uh, VI minus uh, G by uh, R okay so now since G is approximately equals to the ground voltage so that's zero volts so we're gonna get VI by R in this case and then on the other hand the diode equation okay is given by I equals to you know I zero um, e to the power EV by eta okay there goes eta kbt minus one so we're just going to neglect this you know uh, minus one over here and you know, use the approximate form of this equation so that's i zero e to the power ev by eta kbt and now this v that you can see here is actually the voltage across the diode d over here so there goes voltage across diode d 
Okay, so the voltage across the diode D, as you can see here, is basically okay. Just let me, uh, yeah, that's that's better. Let me just the page. So this is basically you know the output voltage, or rather the ground. I mean the, the term voltage at terminal G minus the output voltage gives us the voltage across this diode. So this is basically going to be G minus V O, and since G is zero, it's going to be a minus V O in the result. So we're just going to use the term minus V O over here in place of V. So there it is. So if we just call it uh, expression one and this is expression two, then let me just change the color for a moment. Yeah, that's better. So now, uh, just by equate, I mean, just you know, uh, using uh, the expressions one and two and equating both of them. Okay, so then let me just write it down. So equating one and two, we're gonna get. Okay, so since we're equating one and two because the same current flows to the resistance as well as the diode D. Okay, so therefore we're gonna get V I by R as equals to okay I zero e to the power minus um, E V O by eta K B T. All right. So now this equation, as you can see here, is uh, exponential. So now, if we need to derive some relationship between the input and the output uh, voltage, then we're gonna make this equation linear. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna first bring I O to this side. Okay. So there we go. So we obtain this format of this equation, and then we're gonna take log to the base E on both the sides. Okay. So there you go. All right, so now uh, as you can see here, by us using the properties of log, we're gonna get. I mean, uh, see log e. I mean log something to the base e is just referred to as ln. Okay, so we're just gonna use that symbol over here. So ln v i by i o r is just you know equal to uh, minus e. Sorry, that's v o. Yeah, e v o by eta k b t uh, equal to you know log E base E. Now log E base E should be equal to 1. So we will have ln V I by I O R as equals to minus E V O by eta K B T. Okay, as uh, this whole thing is equal to 1. Alright. So now from this, if we just need to rearrange the system, I mean this equation over here, then we're going to get V O equals to, you know, minus uh, eta K B T by E. Okay, times ln v i by i o r. Okay, so if you just take a look at this equation, okay, so that's the equation we were searching for. Okay, so if you just take a look at this equation, then we have the output voltage, you know, uh, directly proportional to the uh, logarithm of the input voltage. So now, since the output voltage is basically, you know, uh, directly proportional to the logarithm of this input voltage, that's why we have the name, okay, logarithmic amplifier. So that's why this device, I mean, the circuit is known as a logarithmic amplifier since the output produced is equal to the logarithm of the input voltage, okay? So now, uh, having said that, let's just, you know, quickly move on to uh, the second circuit of today. So that's our anti-log amplifier, or rather, let's, if I just, you know, call it in its full name, this, it'll be just anti-logarithmic amplifier. So there you go. Okay, so the anti-logarithmic amplifier, as you can see over here. Okay, so now uh, the circuit of the uh, logarithmic amplifier looks uh, somewhat like this. Okay, now if I just you know, try and draw the circuit of the anti-logarithmic amplifier, then there would be just a little difference uh, between them. Okay, so uh, here, uh, if you just take a look again at the circuit of the logarithmic amplifier, you'd find uh, that the resistance is being connected at the input and the diode is used as a feedback element. But in the circuit of the anti-logarithmic amplifier, the positions of the resistance and the diode would be just you know, interchanged with each other. So we'll have their positions basically swapped. So we'll have the diode at the inverting input and then we'll have the resistance at, as the feedback element. So there you go. And uh, the terminal A as well, you know, uh, holds the input voltage to the circuit. So now by just, you know, again using the same uh, techniques over here, so we can see here that uh, since the um, non-inverting input terminal is basically grounded over here, so its voltage is going to be reflected back to the inverting input terminal as well. So let's just call it terminal G, which will approximately be at the ground voltage. So in this circuit, uh, we're going to have this, uh, you know, terminal G, you know, uh, we'll just call it 
to be you know just suffering from the condition of virtual ground okay um, as seen in the uh, previous case okay the same thing happens over here too so now as we can see here in this circuit since uh, due to this applied you know input voltage over here a current should flow through the diode D and then again through the feedback path and finally out into the uh, output terminal of the op amp so by just uh, looking at this circuit okay if we just you know try and uh, frame the equations concerned okay right I'll just use this color for the moment okay so the I mean current through the diode okay is basically given by um, okay I'll just use the approximate form okay I 0 e to the power EV by eta KBT so now uh, here V represents the voltage across the diode as usual so the voltage I mean the voltage you know falling across the diode is given by V I minus this terminal I mean the voltage of the terminal G so since G is at the uh, zero I mean the ground voltage over here so this will be equal to okay V I okay so we're gonna use V I in this I, I mean in the place of V so this is gonna be our expression one and now the current flowing through the resistance R over here is gonna be given by G minus V O by R so that's equal to since G is approximately equal to the ground voltage so this is going to be minus VO by R. Okay. So now just uh, okay. Let's just call it equate. I mean the expression two. So now just uh, equating uh, both of them. I mean since the same current you know should flow through the diode as well as the feedback resistance. So therefore, uh, just by equating both of them. Okay. Just let me change the color for the moment. Yeah, that's better. So equating. Okay. So there we go. So equating uh, one and two in this case we're gonna get okay let's see what we're gonna get so we're gonna get I0 e to the power EVI by eta KBT as equal to okay let's see what we have here okay minus VO by R fine so now uh, again we see that the equation is again another you know exponential equation and uh, okay fine let's just simplify the equation first and then we'll think about how to you know uh, get the exponential part out of it so uh, we're gonna get this as you know e to the power e v i by eta k b t equals to you know minus v o by i o r okay so now if you all would you know uh, remember uh, back from your uh, 10th or 9th grade mathematics that log of uh, you know a base b if it's this equal to you know c then we can just express this uh, expression as uh, same as this one uh, a equals to b to the power c so we have I mean the equation that we're gonna I mean we have over here over here this one corresponds to uh, this form of the equation a equals to b to the power c where c is okay just uh, let's just call it okay this be a and this be b okay so the format in a and b you know corresponds closely with each other and by comparing them we we see that c represents this term okay b represents e and a rep represents minus v o by i o r okay so since we can you know uh, express this logarithmic uh, relationship as uh, that of i mean i mean like the equation a so we can re-express the equation a as this uh, logarithmic form of this equation that's also possible both ways so what we're going to do here is that we're just going to express the I mean uh, the equation B in its logarithmic form so therefore we'll have basically uh, okay we're gonna have let's just take log E on both sides so log E minus V O by I O R okay so there you go okay so that should be equal to um, yeah that should be equal to yeah right e to the bar V I E V I by eta K B T and now since log E is referred to as ln, so we're going to get ln of minus VO by IOR equals to EVI by eta KBT. And now if we just you know go forward and uh, since we have the ln on uh, the uh, VO, that's the output voltage, if we just you know uh, transfer or rather you know take anti-log on both sides, so taking uh, anti-log on both sides sides so we're gonna get okay so we're basically gonna get uh, VO equal to minus IOR ln inverse EVI by eta KBT 
So there you go. We required this equation, okay, to show you that the output voltage, okay, obtained from this circuit is basically directly proportional to the inverse log of the input voltage VI as you can see over here. So now since the output voltage is basically equal to the uh, log inverse or rather the anti-log of uh, this uh, input voltage, so that's why the circuit is known as an anti-log amplifier. So there you go, you have it, uh, the property of the circuits right there. And now uh, I'd like to, you know, uh, round up my discussion right over here having described the circuits uh, both of the circuits. So see you in the next tutorial on uh, op amps. Okay. So till then, it's just thank you for now and goodbye.